So I spent over a month with the ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X13. This is the RTX 4070 model. They also have one with integrated graphics. So keep in mind, this is gonna be the more high-end model with 32 gigs of RAM. We're gonna talk about some things that I love, some things that I don't like too much, and then hopefully help you make a decision if this is the right laptop for you. Now, first and foremost, I actually noticed that the 2022 model was slightly bigger than the 2023 model. I was reboxing the 2022 model earlier this week, and I went to put the 22 model accidentally in the 23 box, and it just wouldn't fit. It was too big. So I did a little digging and found out that the 22 model was 8.74 from a depth standpoint. So that's like, if the laptop's sitting like this, the height of it. Um, to 8.35 on the new one. So we saved about a half an inch. So you can do the math in centimeters if you would like. So we got almost a half an inch smaller laptop going from 2022 to 2023. But the crazy part is we got a larger trackpad even though we got a smaller form factor. Awesome. Screen stayed the same, trackpad got bigger, what an upgrade. That's why I'm becoming a big fanboy of the 2023 model compared to the 2022. I love the 2022, but I needed a bigger trackpad and heck, why not get some smaller form factor? The next thing I wanna talk about is the pen. It is very responsive. I'm gonna get the screen up close here so you can see it. So as you push harder, you get a nice strong line, a little bit lighter, a little bit of a thinner line down. Now I can go ahead and fold it into tablet mode. Easily use it in tablet mode. So it's got a lot of function. Go ahead and rotate it. It rotates into regular laptop. Takes a second to catch up once you do the rotation, but once it catches, it's very quick, very responsive. And I could even set it like this and draw on it like so. And as I push the screen, the screen actually doesn't push down. The hinge is nice and firm so the screen doesn't push back. So as I'm drawing, it creates a very nice experience. Now, you can't touch the keyboard if you're in this type of mode, but it does create for a very nice, comfortable drawing experience. Something I thought would be really cool is getting an external numpad and setting your keyboard shortcuts to that numpad. So you could like change your brush size by clicking like one, and then change your opacity by clicking two, and then make the opacity different. So I just think that'd be really cool because you could bring that along with you and you'd have a really convenient setup. Um, just, you know, just some ideas for y'all digital art gurus. Now, one of the areas I was really impressed with this laptop because it is so thin and light. I mean, geez, look at that thing. So thin and light, RTX 4070 in there, it's crazy. Um, was the 3D modeling benchmarks were on par with all of the best from 2023. Wasn't blowing things out of the water, wasn't taking first place, but it sits right in the middle of the charts on most of these tests. Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo are showing very good results. Now, SolidWorks is one area that's still struggling. SolidWorks is one of those apps that unless you have a workstation GPU or a Radeon GPU, the RX 6700S or 6800S, you're going to see struggles from laptops with GeForce GPUs. So just keep that in mind. Now, another area of performance I was very impressed with this laptop was video editing. 4K video editing, zero drop frames, 6K B-RAW, only 122 drop frames. The Lenovo Legion Slim 7i actually had 1,300 drop frames. So slimmer laptop, smaller form factor, and not a i9 processor, so a higher TDP processor, this is an HS, HS series processor, is getting better results in 6K B-RAW. Now, 6K RED footage did see 1,548 drop frames, a little on the high end, so just keep that in mind if you're like, oh wow, this might be a... 6K video editing laptop for me. Um, now, as far as the export times are concerned, the 4K export was really good. We had two minutes and 37 seconds 4K. For 6K, it was good, but it wasn't stellar. So one of the best times I've seen on my channel so far was 11 minutes and 43 seconds from the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. And last year's Asus Zephyrus G14 saw 13 minutes and 52 seconds. The X13 from this year saw 19 minutes and 33 seconds. Good, not, not, not bad at all, good. But it just isn't like stellar. So that's why for me, I would say this is a good 
6K video editing laptop, a fantastic 4K video editing laptop, and a ridiculously stellar 1080p laptop. So just keep that in mind in regards to video editing. For those of you that do use DaVinci Resolve, it also had a good export time there at five minutes and 46 seconds. Now, another area that I was really surprised to see great results was in After Effects. Oftentimes when you create a slim form factor laptop, the system has to bottleneck and therefore the After Effects benchmark is not what I had hoped or expected compared to other benchmarks. But totally proving me wrong here. We have a 967 inside of After Effects. Now that is really made possible by the RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM in this system. So if you're considering this laptop for After Effects, I would definitely consider the RTX 4070 version with 32 gigs of RAM. You could do the integrated graphics version, but it just makes me weary with no dedicated GPU and only 16 gigs of RAM. So I would go for the 4070 version. Now, next praise for this laptop is the QHD screen. We have 515 nits of brightness at 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all in a Delta E of 0 0.94. Now, on top of all that, you get a 75 watt hour battery with almost 12 hours of battery life for productivity, almost 10 hours for stream video playback, six hours for Photoshop and four hours for video editing. Now, this is made possible by putting the laptop in eco mode, setting the refresh rate to 60 Hertz, 20% screen brightness, battery saver mode in Windows. And uh, I'm not sure if you know, but that eco mode, that means that the laptop is set to iGPU. So basically you're not using the GPU, you're only using integrated graphics and that's how we're able to get those results. Absolutely stellar. I mean, like I said, I was gonna tell you some things that I don't like about this laptop, but I, I I don't know what I don't like about it. Um, maybe the price, it's a little on the expensive side to say the least. Um, compared to last year's model, which was around the $1599 price point, this one is substantially more. Now in the 2022 model, this laptop was around $1599. And uh, as you can see, click the live pricing in the description below. I don't wanna blow your mind. It has increased quite a bit above that price, but you're getting so much out of this laptop. RTX 40 series, Ryzen 7000 series, a much larger trackpad, crazy performance, a QHD screen. I mean, this is like the premium thin and light on the go 14 inch laptop. This to me has punched the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 in the face, which was my big vote for the last couple of years. Um, I'm still testing a couple different variations of that G14 to try and find what I think about it. Still unsure about it. Gonna do a head to head with the X13 at some point, but for right now, woo, go X13. Yes, if you are thinking it, it is true. I am a fanboy of this laptop and that's okay. I'm not bashful about that. This is a great device. I don't fanboy over brands. I fanboy over the products they create and if they're good enough to stand up to the test. Links in description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your purchasing decision. I'll see you here in the next one.